Let's begin with this problem. Number one, in the circuit shown below, the current flowing through the ammeter is zero amps. Calculate the value of our X. So what we have is a Wheatstone bridge circuit. This circuit is very useful for measuring very low values of resistance. So in this example, we need to calculate our X. Now the current flowing through the ammeter, which let's call it IM, is zero amps. Now, if there's no current flowing here, that means that the voltage, or rather the potential at these two points are the same. So let's call this A, B, C, and D. So the electric potential at point C has to be equal to the electric potential at point B, I mean point D rather. So when that's the case, what we have is a Wheatstone bridge that is balanced. The resistors on the left balances the resistors on the right. So whenever you have a balanced condition, the resistors on the left are actually proportional to the resistors on the right. So going from R1 to R3, we simply need to multiply it by 2. 30 times 2 is 60. So going from R2 to Rx, we need to multiply by 2. And that will give us the answer. So Rx is going to be equal to 140. Now that's the answer, but I'm going to show you what formulas you can use to confirm your answer. Now the first thing we need to realize is that because no current flows through the ammeter, we can just get rid of the ammeter. Now we can redraw the circuit like this. So this circuit is equivalent to the one I'm about to draw. So this is R1, R3, R2, and Rx. Now, let's say that the current flowing through R1 is, let's call it IA. Now, there's no current flowing in this branch. So therefore, IA also flows through R2. And the current flowing through R3, let's call it IB. So that's going to be the same current flowing through Rx. Now, because these two points are directly attached to each other, the voltage is the same. So as we said before, VC is equal to VD. The potential at those two points will be the same. That means that VR1 is equal to VR3 because R1 is connected directly across R3. So the voltage across those two resistors will be the same. Likewise, VR2 is equal to VRX because these resistors are parallel to each other. They're connected directly across each other. So what we're going to do now is take a ratio of two voltages. We're going to write VR1 over VR2. Now we know that VR1 is equal to VR3 and VR2 is equal to VRX. Now the reason why I chose to divide VR1 by VR2 is because they share the same current. The voltage across R1 is equal to the current that flows through it times R1 itself, according to Ohm's law. So VR1 can be replaced with IA times R1. VR2 is IA times R2. Now VR3, that's going to be IB times R3. It's the current flowing through it times the resistance. VRX is going to be IB times RX. So we could cancel IA and we can cancel IB. So we're left with this expression. R1 over R2 is equal to R3 over RX. If we raise both sides or each fraction to the negative one power, we can flip the two fractions. So we get R2 over R1 is equal to Rx over R3. Multiplying both sides by R3, we can isolate Rx. 
given us this formula. So Rx is going to be R2 over R1 times R3. In this example, R2 is 70, R1 is 30, and R3 is 60. So we could divide first. 60 divided by 30 is 2, and then 2 times 70 is 140. So that's how you could show your work to get the answer. So that's how you can calculate the missing resistor in a balanced condition. Now, here's another similar problem. For the sake of practice, go ahead and try it. Just like the last problem, the current flowing through the ammeter is going to be zero amps. So feel free to pause the video and calculate Rx. So looking at R2 and R1, notice that if we multiply 16 by 3, we can get 48. Or if we divide 48 by 3, we'll get 16. So likewise, if we divide 60 by 3, we will get our x, which is 20. So I did it a little different than in the last one. In the last example, I multiplied this resistor by some number to get the other one. So if you were to divide 48, I mean 60 by 48, that will be 1.25. So that's your multiplier. Now, if you take 16 and multiply it by 1.25, that should give you 20 as well. And so you have different ways in which you can find the answer if the Wheatstone bridge is balanced. So the answer is 20. Now let's move on to our second type of problem. Calculate the voltage reading of the voltmeter in the circuit shown below. Feel free to pause the video and try this problem. So let's call this point A, point B, point C, and point D. In order to calculate the voltage reading of the voltmeter, that's going to be the difference between the potential at C and at D. So if we could find those values, we can get the answer. Now, it's important to understand that a voltmeter has a very high resistance. The resistance is so high that the current flowing through the voltmeter is negligible. We could assume that it's almost zero. So because of that, the equivalent circuit that we have looks something like this. So in this circuit, there is no connection between point C and D. They're virtually disconnected. Now we know the potential at B is zero and the potential at A is 60 because that's the voltage of the battery. How can we determine the potential at C and at D? This is R1 and this is R2. If we focus on this branch of the circuit, notice that this forms a voltage divider. To calculate the voltage across R2, we could use this formula. So V2 is, or rather, V across R2. That's going to be R2 over R1 plus R2 times the voltage of the battery, or the source of voltage. By the way, one thing that we should have done at the beginning is determine if this particular Wheatstone bridge circuit is balanced or unbalanced. What would you say? Would you say it's balanced or unbalanced? Comparing R1 and R3, R3 is twice the value of R1. Now, if we multiply R2 by 4, we're not going to get 7. We're going to get 12. So the ratio between R1 and R2 is not the same as the ratio between 3 and 4. 6 divided by 4 is not the same as 7 divided by 8. You could also divide it the other way as well. But the ratio is not the same. So this particular circuit is unbalanced, which means that the potential at C will be different than the potential at D. Now, if the circuit was balanced, the voltage 
that would be read by the voltmeter would be zero. VC would equal VD. So we don't have a balanced condition. So that means V is some number other than zero. So let's go ahead and use this formula. R2 is six, R1 is four, and then plus R2 times the source, excuse me, the source voltage. So we have six over 10 times 60. 60 divided by 10 is six, and then six times six is 36. So the voltage across R2 is 36. which means the potential at C is 36 volts. Now let's do the same thing to determine the potential at point D. So this is R3 and this is R4. So the formula that we're gonna use is gonna be very similar. The voltage across R4 is going to be R4 divided by R4 plus R3 times the source voltage. R4 in this example is 7, and then R3 is 8 times 60. So we have 7 over 15 times 60. 60 divided by 15 is 4, 4 times 7 is 28. So the potential at D is 28 volts. So now that we have VC and VD, we can get the answer. So VC is 36, VD is 28, so that gives us a potential difference of 8 volts. So that is what is going to be read by the voltmeter. The voltmeter is going to read a voltage of 8 volts across point C and D.